very rare event. An extreme solar storm started last night on October 2024. The Space Weather Prediction Center said that a powerful burst of energy shot out from the sun on Tuesday and reached our atmosphere on Thursday. People across much of the northern part of the country, all the way down to Alabama and Northern California, could see the auroras. Forecasters believe the light show might last into Friday night. However, you would think that a rare event like this will occur once every four decades, but the storm watch is the second one issued only this year. A similar event happened in May of this year. Space weather experts are alerting us that Earth might face one of its biggest geomagnetic storms in years. Because of the size and frequency of these incoming storms, we might face a severe g satellite signals get weaker, which means GPS and communication services go down a bit, according to SWPC. These storms can also create electric currents on Earth, which might harm power systems and mess up train tracks. They can also cause bright, colorful auroras that are seen over large areas. G4 storms happen every few months when the sun is very active, but predicting them is very difficult. This is the first time since January 2005 that the, the G5 storm famously knocked out power in Sweden and wrecked transformers in South Africa, highlighting just how devastating these mighty geomagnetic disturbances can be. Potential Impacts on Modern Infrastructure in our world that relies heavily on technology, a large geomagnetic storm could lead to major problems with electricity, including wide-reaching power outages and harm to important systems. Some of the issues we might see include problems with controlling voltage and accidental shutdowns of safety features in the power network, stronger currents and pipelines, buildup of electrical charge and more resistance on satellites close to Earth, difficulties in keeping spacecraft on the correct path and properly oriented, problems with satellite navigation systems like GPS, which might not work for hours, random disruptions or complete loss of high-frequency HF radio signals. Geomagnetic storms are what we call these events. They happen when high-energy particles from solar flares, which the sun throws out, reach Earth. Even though the sun is always sending out these particles into space, our planet is usually safe because it's 93 million miles away from the sun, which keeps most of these particles from getting to us. Preparing for the Worst Director of NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, SWPC, emphasized the agency's readiness, taking the right safety measures, and having backup plans ready can reduce the dangers that come with big geomagnetic storms. Though they don't happen often, the severe G4 geomagnetic storm watch reminds us how strong and impactful our sun can be, and how its actions can reach all the way to Earth. The NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center We'll keep a close eye on this event and share any new information as it happens. Throughout history, people have been captivated by the stars and planets, often worshipping them or seeing them as omens. Rare occurrences like eclipses and comets brought about fear, as they were thought to be signals of looming catastrophes. Is this event a sign of the end times? Numerous biblical passages link end-time events with astronomical phenomena. The sun, the moon, the stars, meteors. The Bible is a history book, but it is unlike any other history book available in any public library. The history of the Bible starts with the creation of the earth and ends with the end of the world. No other history book has ever been published that covers such a broad range of events on planet Earth, partially because no one was present at the start to witness and document it, and therefore no one can write the beginning of our world authoritatively. 
Christians do not need to be afraid of the last days. We are the only folks in the whole world who know how it will all end. That is unique. The Lord did not reveal the future to his followers to satisfy their curiosity. It was to prepare them for the future so that they would not be surprised when it arrived and that they would not misinterpret it. Be grateful that Jesus was so forthright in sharing what the future holds for us. People ask, are we in the end times? However, the Bible talks of the last days and we have been in the last days for 2,000 years. The last days started at Pentecost where the first prophecy of the last days was fulfilled. Every Christian generation should live to be ready for the Lord's return. The Bible is a book full of predictions. Its pages contain 735 predictions about the future. A prediction can be found in one quarter of the Bible's chapters. From beginning to end, it is basically a prophetic text though some books focus more on predictions than others. 596 of the 735 predictions have indeed occurred and have literally come true according to the scripture prediction. So, 81% of all Bible prophecies have already come true, and some of those prophecies were made centuries before the case. It doesn't take much confidence to believe that the remaining 19% will happen as well. That's a very high score. The Bible has proved 100% right for every prediction that could have been fulfilled by now. Of the rest, most of them are concerned with the actual return of Jesus and what follows after that. How many of these predictions remain to come true before Jesus returns? The answer is about 20 and we are watching to see those happen first before we look for the Lord's return. Jesus told us to watch and pray. What do we watch? We cannot stand still and watch the clouds to wait for him to appear. That is not what he meant. He meant, keep an eye on what's going on in the world and see what signs they gave you to help you prepare. Signals are the signs. So let's look at Matthew chapter 24, where the disciples asked him, what will be the signs or signals of your return? What would we do if we don't know when it's going to happen? In the Olivet Prophecy found in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus Christ told us about some critical signs that would appear in the end times. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not provide its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. These particular signs are said after the tribulation begins. John expanded on this theme of heavenly signs under the inspiration of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17 tells us about the sixth seal. What could grab our attention these days? It might be the incredible signs that Christ predicted. The signs in the sky that he talked about will definitely be out of the ordinary and will match many old predictions from the Old Testament. I looked when he the Lamb broke open the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth, like a fig tree shedding its late summer figs when shaken by a strong wind. The sky was split, separated from the land, and rolled up like a scroll, and every mountain and island were dislodged and moved out of their places. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the military commanders and the wealthy and the strong and everyone whether slave or free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the righteous wrath and indignation of the Lamb. 
for the great day of their wrath and vengeance and retribution has come. And who is able to face God and stand before the wrath of the Lamb? Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. Throughout history, people have been captivated by the stars and planets. At times, they worship these celestial bodies, and at other times, they believed these stars and planets could predict future events. Events like eclipses and comets brought fear, as people thought they signaled upcoming catastrophes. However, today's society has charted the skies and predicted the movements of eclipses and comets. What would grab everyone's attention now? It would probably be the magnificent events that Christ predicted. The signs in the heavens he spoke of will be undeniably supernatural, and they will fulfill many old prophecies from the Old Testament. Also, it is important to look at the rest of what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, which is known as the Olivet Discourse. There are a lot of signs in the heavens based on what Jesus said. Here is the whole of verse 29. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not provide its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. People often overlook the stars falling and the planets shaking. Also, Jesus clearly states that this sign will appear immediately after the distress, which refers to the abomination of desolation mentioned in verse 15. For at that time, there will be a great tribulation, pressure, distress, oppression, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will again. And if those days of tribulation had not been cut short, no human life would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, God's chosen ones, those days will be shortened. Matthew chapter 24 verses 21 through 22. This will be the most difficult period of hardship the world has ever experienced. It's essential to keep in mind that Jesus mentioned no one knows the exact time of his comeback. Matthew chapter 24 verse 36. The Apostle Peter gives us practical instruction in light of the end times. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be in the meantime? in holy behavior, that is, in a pattern of daily life that sets you apart as a believer, and in godliness, displaying profound reverence toward our awesome God, while you earnestly look for and await the coming of the day of God. For on this day, the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the material elements will melt with intense heat. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 11 through 12 Leading our lives while waiting for Christ's return involves living purely and looking forward with hope. The Bible does not instruct us to figure out when end times events will happen by studying the stars and planets. Isaiah uses strong pictures to describe people hiding among the rocks because they are scared of the Lord's mighty power. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 10. The following verses, 11 and 12, explain why God chooses to act in such a powerful way. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Human pride often gets in the way of the wonderful relationship God wants with us to be His children, as told in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Pride also ruins our other relationships, causing much sadness and pain. Sometimes, the only way to break through tough pride is by making big changes, and that is what God plans to do. During these tough times, people will realize how useless their idols are. They will discard them to the moles and bats, 
as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 20. This doesn't just mean physical idols like charms and religious items. The Apostle Paul explains that idolatry today includes our greed and desire for more, as seen in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Our cars, entertainment systems, and other belongings can become the center of our lives, just like gods were in other cultures. Eventually, people will understand that constantly wanting more is a pointless pursuit. Isaiah speaks about the day of the Lord again in Isaiah chapter 13, verses 9 through 11. This time, it's connected with the stars, sun, and moon going dark. For see, the day of the Lord is coming, the terrible day of his fury and fierce anger. The land will be made desolate, and all the sinners destroyed with it. The heavens will be black above them, the stars will give no light. The sun will be dark when it rises, and the moon will provide no light. I, the Lord, will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their sin. I will crush the arrogance of the proud and humble the pride of the mighty. Isaiah chapter 13 verses 9 through 11. Let us pray. Divine Father, we come before you with open hearts seeking your guidance and wisdom as we delve into the sacred pages of your word. In the quiet of this moment, we ask for your presence to surround us, illuminating our minds and hearts with understanding. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It holds the key to understanding your will for our lives and the world around us. As we embark on this journey of exploration and discovery, grant us clarity of mind and a humble spirit that we may approach your word with reverence and awe. Grant us the wisdom to discern the truths hidden within its pages and the humility to accept them with open hearts. Help us to set aside our preconceived notions and biases allowing your spirit to speak to us afresh with each passage we read. Guide us, O Lord, as we seek to unravel the mysteries of your word. Grant us insight into its historical and cultural context, that we may better understand the messages you have preserved for us through the ages. May your word come alive to us in new and vibrant ways speaking directly to the depths of our souls. Give us teachable spirits, O Lord, that we may learn from your word and apply its truth to our lives. Help us to not only be hearers of your word, but also doers, living out its principles in our thoughts, words, and actions. Father, we acknowledge that your word is living and active sharper than any double-edged sword. As we study its pages, may it pierce through the darkness of our ignorance and illuminate the path of righteousness before us. Transform us, O Lord, by the renewing of our minds, that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. We lift up to you, Lord, all those who are struggling to understand your word. Whether they are new believers seeking to grow in their faith or seasoned saints grappling with difficult passages, we ask for your grace to abound in their lives. Open their eyes to see the wonders of your word and open their hearts to receive its life-giving message. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word given to us out of your great love and mercy. May it be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us each step of the way. And may all glory and honor be unto you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.